are you able to learn Salesforce? And back then, Trailhead wasn't a thing. I had to learn from books, from forums, from Stack Exchange, things like that. And I said, hey, yeah, I think I can do it. And they were like, okay, so from now on, you are the Salesforce developer in the company. That is Matos Gonzalez, a technical credential developer at Salesforce for the Trailhead team. And there, he was being somewhat voluntold to learn Salesforce during his career as a Java developer. And as he started picking up his Salesforce skills and experience, he also discovered one of our common problems, a trigger that wasn't bulkified. And that trigger also turned out to be his introduction to Trailhead. And people started to complain that, hey, we have this process and we can only update one record at a time. Do you mind checking what's happening here? And I noticed what was happening there. I said, okay, this is so wrong. Let me try to fix that. But before even touching it, do we have any good practices, any documentation on triggers? Do we have any, I don't know, trigger handler class out there or something like that? And I started to search for things online. And then I think someone sent me a link. Oh, someone sent me a link saying, hey, this is Trailhead. is a free platform where you can learn for free. And it's from Salesforce directly. And there's a bunch of great content here. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. And I think it was a few days prior to Dreamforce, if I'm not mistaken, because I think Trailhead was introduced during Dreamforce. And it was love at first time because I love video games and I love learning. And Trailhead, it's kind of a mix of both things. You learn and there's some gamification process in the middle of the process. It's, it's like you are leveling up your own character. Yeah, it was love a first time. Eventually, Mateos gets offered the chance to work with two things he really loves, Salesforce technology and Trailhead. And by that time, we've added super badges into the mix of content. So Trailhead has units, it's got trails, it's got projects, it's got super badges. So let's break down what all of that really means. So a unit in a project, let's say a unit is a way that we have at Salesforce to introduce you to a concept. So we talk about the concepts and we explain the details. And a project, it's a, I don't know, maybe an evolution from a unit because in a project, we introduce you with the concept of requirements. So you need to use what you learned in the project in, in the units to develop the project. But in a way that we take you by the hand and we give you all the details, all the step by step, then you go to your org or playground and you perform all that those steps, learning in the middle of the process. But one thing that Trejo had noticed was that, well, there is a learning philosophy that you only learn when you try to implement something without anyone taking you by the hand. And for super badges, I think that's the biggest difference. We don't provide you the details and the step-by-step. -step. We don't provide you with the instructions because super badges are meant to be credentials. Same way as certification exams, credentials, super badges are credentials. So we expect you to use everything that you learned from projects and units where we provided you all the details and best practices and instructions. But you need to apply that in a different scenario with different requirements, and you need to go ahead and develop the solution. So it's a way for you to showcase your mastery, showcase how much you learn, and it's definitely the secret sauce of Trailhead. So let's talk about that scenario, because it's definitely core to the concept of a super badge. When you're going to start designing a super badge, what's the process behind defining that scenario? Wow, a little bit of behind the scenes here. Um, so we have an internal process to create certifications and it's the same process, very similar process that we use to create super badges, which is usually we invite experts, let's say Apex. We gather a group of amazing Apex developers and we sit down and start to ask them some questions. So let's add to this list a bunch of stuff that you think it's a minimally qualified candidate which is a concept that we use for people that it, it kind of describe the person that it's available to pass that super badge to achieve the super badge, the minimum requirements, so the minimum skills. And we use this concept and using this concept, we ask them, say, so for this person, this persona, what kind of skills this person must have? What concepts from Apex using this example? What concepts of Apex this person must know? And using all this data, then we jump into another process, which is, okay, from this list of things that this person must know, what's the criticality, which one is priority? And using all of that, 
then we sit down and say, okay, there is this bunch of stuff that a Salesforce developer must know about. And remember that super badges are designed to test your real world usage of your Salesforce skills. And so all of these requirements that are getting ticked off, well, they have to get wrapped into a solution-based scenario. So we use these concepts that we gather with the experts to define what needs to be in the super badge. And once we have this package of requirements, then we start to create some scenario around them. So some people think that super badges are created, let's say someone just go and code something and then using the project they're creating, they create the scenario around it. It's actually the other way around. We start with all the requirements and skills that the person must have. And then from there, we create the scenario. Remember the motto, keep trailhead weird, because super badges can be very demanding. They can be very taxing, but the team really wants to make sure that you don't lose the fun. Uh, rewrite the scenario in the way that it has to be fun. It has to be, you have to enjoy going through the whole thing and reading the requirements. It has to be something that when you read the requirements, you know what's being tested, so there's no catch. The, we don't. We are not trying to be tricky or anything. We just want to test if you know that skill. It has to be done in a way that most of the time there is the last possible solutions. Because what may happen is, let's say we ask a trailblazer to do something, and there are ten different ways to meet that requirement. This is very hard for us on the background to check for all of those scenarios, all of those solutions. So we try to narrow down to one or two possible solutions. And then once we have the scenario, once we have the code or the structure, in some cases a package, in some cases a special work that they need to use, like for Einstein, for billing, we provide a special work to start. But then we invite other experts to test it. And one of the things that we test is if that scenario is something nice to read, if they had fun, if it was something they enjoyed to do over. It's not like a metric. We don't have a metric. So this has to be 60% fun. But it has to be fun. It's something that we worry about. And it's something that we add in the list among all the other skills that we are testing. Now, compared to units or projects, super badges really operate kind of on a whole different level. They're a lot more complicated. They're a lot more time consuming. And the Trailhead team uses performance metrics to really kind of make sure that that's being balanced correctly. So we have some internal data that we check. Uh, using reports to check if someone, I don't know, the number of trailblazers they are achieving versus the number of trailblazers that started to do that, that super badge, how long they took to complete the super badge. Because let's say someone is, it took us during the test, it took us two hours to complete the super badge and it's taking them 30 minutes. There's something wrong. So there are some red flags there. But yeah, we have some data to uh, understand if something is way too easy or too hard. It's very easy to understand if something is too hard because we are going to receive a lot of emails. And, <laughs> yeah, and But it's good receiving feedback. And that's another thing. If you're listening to this podcast and you do super badges, please, if you see a pop-up asking for feedback in the end of the super badge, Please provide your feedback because we use that to make some tweaks and make that super badge better for other trailblazers. But not only that, we use those pieces of feedback to improve the future super badges as well. So we all benefit from it. So outside of designing and developing the scenario itself, you're also responsible for the technology and the code behind actually checking the super badge. Walk us through a little bit about what happens when somebody's actually clicking that check challenge button. Oh, that's a good question. So it's magic. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's technology. So for it, it depends on the kind of hands-on challenge we are assessing. But in general, what happens is we have to write um, some code for each one of those buttons. And when you click that button, you as a trailblazer, what we are doing on the background is we are connected to your playground, right? So we are going to your playground and we are validating the requirements against your org. Meaning, let's say we are asking you to add a few to a page layout. So on the background, we have code requesting metadata from your org, and then we are checking inside the metadata if that field was added to the page layout. Same for, I don't know, some Apex class. We are querying your Apex classes using 
Julian API, Metadata API, the same technology that you as a trailblazer, as a Salesforce developer, you may use on your job. So we go to the org, we make those requests, we get the result, we analyze the result, and if it passes all the checks, then we go to the next, we call it action. And for each one of those buttons, we may have, I don't know, an infinite number of different checks. So that's the reason why sometimes you click the button and you see an error message, then you go and fix it. And if you click the same button, now you're seeing a different error message, meaning we are checking for a different thing now. That's how things work on the background. And we cannot just assume that the object's in there because once we query the data, this is going to blow up and show a very weird message to the trailblazer. We don't want that. That was something that I introduced when I joined the team. I created a document of best practices for us as technical developers to follow. And one of the steps is if you are checking for data first, please check if the object in the, the dev org or playground, then check if the fields that you are querying, they are also there. So before even checking if the data that the trailblazer is creating is correct or not, we are validating if the object exists, if the field exists, if the metadata is correct. And uh, there's a slightly different way that we approach that when we compare error messages for regular modules and projects to error messages in super badges. And the reason is because, again, super badges are credentials and we cannot give you the solution. For projects in modules that they have hands-on challenge, we can straightforward say, so here's the thing, there's no this, 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 and that, please go ahead and fix it. For super badges, we need to be a little more careful to don't review the solution, but we still need to make the error message helpful and to guide the trailblazer to go ahead and find the right solution. Okay, so we've said many times now that super badges are credentialing. So then what is the link between Trailhead and super badges and web assessors, <laughs> web assessors, web assessor and what we've kind of more <laughs> traditionally thought of as a certificate exam? Yeah, that's also a question that I heard from many trailblazers out there during Dreamforce and Trailhead DX. And we have a connection, we have some integration between the database we use for super badges and the database or the system for we use for web assessor. And the biggest reason is that, let's say for Platform Developer 2, which is one of the certifications we have, in order to achieve the certification, in order to get the certification, you need to pass the exam, the Platform Developer 2 exam, and you need to achieve four different developer super badges. Once you have all of that, then you receive your certificate. And in order to have this connection, we have to integrate both platforms. And with this mixture of projects and trail mixes and super badges and credentials, what's good advice for having a perspective on approaching Trailhead in order to get credentialed? My personal perspective here, because again, I am a trailblazer. I, I was a Salesforce developer. So my approach was always to go to the super badges first because by doing the super badge, by achieving that super badge, I'm learning in the middle of the process. And even if the super badge is not at all related to the certification exam, the certification I'm trying to achieve, let's say platform developer one, you don't need a super badge to be platform developer one certified. That's not a requirement, but by achieving the Apex, especially super badge, this is helping me get prepared for the exam. And there's a bunch of stuff you can do on Trailhead to get prepared for the exam. We have a trail mix called Prepare for Platform Developer 1. We have a trail, and that's a new thing. I think it's worth saying. We have a trail called Study for the Platform Developer 1 exam. And we have something new like flashcards. That's something new on Trailhead. And this trail is going to help you get more prepared for the exam. But completing the answer to your question, always start with the super badge first because I learn about new concepts or I, I don't know, practice to those concepts. And when I go to the exam, I'm more prepared. And that's our show. So head on over to Trailhead, find those trail mixes and the trails and get started on your credentialing journey. Now, before we go, whenever I have the chance, I do like to be able to give a shout out to other podcasts out there, including Matthias's, who has a couple of side projects outside working with Trailhead. I have two podcasts. Both of them are in Brazilian Portuguese, but I love them. Uh, it's something that I really enjoy doing. One, it's about technology. So I write about technology in Brazil for a website called Technoblog. 
technoblog.com.br because it's in Brazil. And we have a podcast called Technocast. And in this podcast, we talk about technology in general, new things that are happening right now, new releases, phones, TVs, even electric cars. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can get a little conversation, can go to a philosophical way sometimes. But we basically talk about technology and news. And my personal podcast, which is Toadcast, T O D. C-A-S-T, Toadcast, is a podcast where I talk about, I have some friends, I received some guests to talk about first, about immigration, about how he's living in, in the US or Canada or in Europe, living abroad. But I think the biggest part of the podcast is the questions we answer about science. So we receive questions from our audience, usually questions they are interesting or funny, and we try to answer them in a very simple way, but using scientific facts. So some examples like why the human eye may be colorful, or um, I don't know, why are planets round? Why different animals live more and or live less than the others? Things like that. And we have five minutes to answer those questions. So sometimes it's very, very hard. And the idea is to share scientific knowledge and it has to be fun. So it's always a very crazy conversation. We laugh a lot and we try to be informative and entertaining at the same time. As always, we will have more information in our show notes, including links to the relevant trails and trail mixes and to Matthias's other podcasts. Thank you for listening. If you want to learn more about this podcast, head on over to developer.salesforce.com slash podcast, where you can hear old episodes, transcripts, and also links to your favorite podcast service. Thanks again. And I'll talk to you next week. Mm -hmm.